title of the message for this morning is Doing Good. However, I, I don't want to get to it because even as we were praying in the, the prayer room before service, I felt the Holy Spirit just drop the thought into my heart. And I want to just speak that out and you know, it may take 30 seconds, it may take 30 minutes, I don't know, we'll find out. But, but uh, we are talking about doing good, and I was reminded how last week I shared with you that Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And what did Jesus do? Well, we saw that He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Amen? Yes. Again, we have to understand the thief, the devil, yes. does not come but to steal, kill, and to destroy. Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and that more abundant. So in those two verses alone, we see Jesus doing good and giving abundant life. We see the devil stealing, killing, destroying, and oppressing. Yes. So we really have to get an understanding of who God really is. And I have a feeling, no, actually, I know this, there are many, many, many Christians that need to be introduced to Jesus. Yes, that's true. Yeah. They know about God. They know about Jesus, but they don't really know Jesus. Yes, they may be saved, but they don't really know Him. And the reason I can say that is because of words that I hear come out of people's mouths. As Cheryl's saying, you know, that God would want you to suffer. So many people have been raised with so much religion that you can tell somebody time after time about the goodness of God and show them in Scripture and and ask them to show you in Scripture where Jesus ever wanted anybody to suffer. Where Jesus ever put any bad thing on someone to teach them a lesson. It's just not there, but people will fight you over that. Now, I am a believer in Scripture. And most of the time when anybody has that argument, they have to go to the Old Testament. And we have to understand we are under a new and different covenant. That's right. yeah. There was a time the wrath of God was revealed, but today is a day of grace. Somebody say praise God. Thank praise Jesus. God. Yeah. Today's a day of grace. Yeah. Men are storing up, according to Romans chapter 2, wrath for the day of wrath at the righteous judgment of God. But as long as it's called today, God's not judging. And listen, his parenting tactics are a lot better than giving you cancer to make you love him more. That's right. To teach you a lesson that's just not in the book. But yet many times we're like, oh yeah, yeah. And, and, and even though we know better, we tend to amen things like that. And I don't believe in being rude, but at the same time, I'm not going to get in agreement with it. Amen? Yeah. So... Okay, I think I'm ready now. <laughs> Jesus went about doing good. And in Galatians chapter 6, in verse 10, it reads there, Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all. If you have the King James Version, it says all men, but normally when it says all men or men, it's speaking of mankind, so it includes everybody. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. So, we're to do good to all men. You know, as a church and as individuals, we're called to do good. I think in the Pentecostal charismatic, many of the non-denominational type churches such as we are, we tend to focus on studying the Bible, worshiping God, praying, and that's good. That's good. 
And you got your mainline denominations such as Episcopal, Lutheran, maybe Methodist. They focus more on doing good works. And I'm not saying to be saved, but they just focus on doing things. It's kind of like in the Bible where it talks about Mary and how Mary worshipped at the feet of Jesus. And then you had Martha who was busy going about taking care of everything, doing good. Amen? Now, Martha was rebuked, but it wasn't because she was doing good. She was just often her timing a little bit. See, there's a time to worship and there's a time to work. Amen? And we have to learn, we're called to do both as individuals and as a church. We're called to do both. We're called to, to pray and to worship and, and to learn the Word, study the Word, to be a disciple. And we're also called to do good. That's what Christians were known for uh, in, in the early century. They were known for doing good. So we need to learn how to marry the both. Amen? So, the question is, what are some of the ways that we can accomplish this? One way is to help those in need. One way is to do physical things for people, as well as spiritual. You know, we here at Crosswalk Fellowship pray for the sick every Sunday, pretty much. We either Cheryl will lift them up in prayer or somebody will come up and we'll pray. But we offer a time of prayer every Sunday because we believe prayer is important. We believe prayer will change things. And, and we have seen much evidence of that, that prayer has changed many things. So every Sunday we pray and we've seen many people receive healing because we pray. See, that's doing good, amen? It's good to take time out to pray. And not only in church, but church, talking to you, if you will go out and about, and, and you know, who cares who's looking? If you see somebody at Walmart and they need prayer, just lay your hand on their shoulder and, and just pray for them. I mean, people don't care to cuss in front of you. They don't care to tell dirty stories in front of you. Why should we be ashamed to talk about Jesus in front of them and to pray in front of them? I don't care what anybody thinks. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation. It doesn't matter. We can tell people about Jesus wherever, whenever the Holy Spirit prompts us to. Amen. We pray for the sick. Mike and I pray every Tuesday. We lift up some of the same needs we talk about on Sunday. We pray for the church. We pray for what's going on in our world. We pray for our country. Uh, we just spend some time in prayer. You see, that's good works. I would like to see us get to the point where we have different groups coming here to pray. Some ladies maybe gather together. doesn't even have to be official. Hey, let's go over to the church and pray. Some men to get together and say, hey, let's have a time of prayer. It doesn't have to be a weekly thing, but just spontaneous even. Because prayer is important, and prayer is a good work. Amen? Yeah. As a church... We have given away hundreds of dollars this past year to meet the needs, physical needs of people. Needs such as rent, food, medical, motel rooms, gas, to get to work. We've helped with utility bills. It's called benevolence. And we try to give out a certain amount of money. And we've kind of gone beyond our certain amount of money this year. But uh, that's good works. And we're called to good works. Amen? We have given hundreds of dollars to missionaries to meet physical and spiritual needs in Honduras and Scotland. For over five years, we provided snacks to those that waited in intensive care waiting room at St. Mary's Hospital. Now we're starting a food closet to meet physical needs and help those in need. We're now in a process, as we so comically saw uh, at the beginning of the service, in making shoe boxes full of toys and whatnot for the children in different world, third world countries and even here in America, I believe. Another project we're starting, uh, as soon as I find out for sure our role, 
is, uh, and you'll hear more about this soon, but collecting green beans for the Evansville Rescue Mission to uh, help them with their Thanksgiving meal. Uh, also, uh, I haven't forgot, Hannah, uh, we're also looking uh, at uh, working in a soup kitchen as a youth event here in the near future. We're working on the details on that and trying to get all the young people together to come up with a good date to do that. And it's not my intention this morning to say, hey, look at us. You know, look what we're doing. But rather, I want to illustrate that we are following the instructions of the Word of God. And I, I expect as we grow, we will do more and more because I believe there has to be a balance of us just coming, and, not just, but us coming and worshiping Jesus and, and, and praying and, and uh, uh, studying the Word. That's very important. Matter of fact, that's the most important. But at the same time, you know, it's important to do good works because the Bible tells us that we are created for good works. And that's not how we're saved. We don't do it to be saved, but we do it because we are saved. Amen? Hallelujah. So it says, do good unto all men. It also says, as we have opportunity. As we have opportunity. At church, I, get, I let you in on a secret. You can pray for those opportunities. I sometimes pray for divine appointments. And that's when opportunities seem to just find you. Amen? In Luke chapter 10, verse 33, it reads there, But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. I'm talking about this man. I'll tell you about him in a minute. And when he saw him, he had compassion. Now, most of you probably know the story there in Luke 10, the story of the Good Samaritan. We know that there was a man that was beaten and robbed and left laying on the side of the road. And people passed him by. We see that a Levite passed this man by. We see a priest passed this man by. And, uh, you know, it may have not have been that they didn't care, but they may have oh, I just don't have time to get involved with that right now. But needless to say, they went on past. But then this man comes that we call the Good Samaritan. He stops and he, he helps the man. He takes him to the Motel Super 8. And he tells him, he says, uh, you know, take care of him and here's some money to take care of his needs. And if, if he needs to stay longer than this, if it costs more than this, I'll give you more money the next time I come around. That's really going out of your way, isn't it? But we see how he had this opportunity to do good. And he took advantage of it. Amen? Every day we come across opportunities to do good and to glorify God. But unfortunately, sometimes we just kind of pass them by because, oh, that would be awkward. We pass them by because we say, oh, I'm in too big of a hurry to uh, see if I can help here. You may see a car broke down and, and uh, people, they, you know, they may need a push. They may be out in the middle of traffic and they're just trying to push that car and they're not getting anywhere quick. Amen? And you can pull over it. I mean, if it says, uh, as you're able. Now, you know, some folks may not be able to do that. It may not be wise to do that. But others could jump out of their car. And they could go and help push that car off the road. And uh, when they say thank you, just say, give God glory. Amen? I remember one time, it's been several years ago, that I was at a gas station and my muffler fell off. Because, you know, we had such a nice car at the time. <laughs> And my muffler fell off, and I was trying to figure out a way to rig it up, you know, to get on home with it. So I'm looking at it and, and getting ready to get down there. And this construction guy that's working on the corner walks over, and he says, what's going on? I said, well, this muffler came out. He goes, well, if you don't mind, I'll take care of it for you. I work on cars. I take care of it real quick. I, oh, I appreciate it. You know, so this young man gets underneath there, and he, you know, loops it around, gets it all tight, nice and tight up there. And I said, well, thank you. I said, uh, you know, what I owe you? He said, oh, nothing. Just give God glory. You see? Now, I'll tell you, I'm a, I'm a Christian. I'm a pastor, and that impressed me. Yeah. Can you imagine if you were just some heathen? You know, I mean, what I mean by that, I'm not calling them names. I'm just saying somebody that doesn't believe in God. Okay? Can you imagine what impact that might have on them? You know, instead of just pointing their finger telling them how bad they are, if somebody came up and helped them. Amen? 
another time, Cheryl and I uh, were driving down, I don't remember where it was, I think it was Franklin. We were driving down and this overweight elderly woman fell down out of her wheelchair. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> Just rolled right out of her wheelchair. So we swung in, pulled in, and, and I got out and helped her. And it was awkward. I won't go into details about that, but it was awkward. And, uh, and, and we, you know, it took five minutes of my time. Five minutes. But it, 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 it was a, a day changer for her and her daughter. So, I mean, you know, maybe somebody else would have stopped, but she'd just been laying there on no telling how long she just lay there, you know. So uh, just a little goes a long way when we see something good to do and do it. Doing good as we have opportunity and the ability. That young man had the ability to fix my muffler. I had the ability to lift that woman up and put her in a wheelchair. Now, if I see somebody on the side of the road working on their car, I don't necessarily have the ability to go fix their car. I can make a phone call for them, but someone like Tom could see that and you know get them back on the road. And I, I've been fortunate. I haven't been stuck on the side of the road in a long time. I learned how to keep gas in my car now, you know, and uh, things of that nature. And uh, I, fortunately, you know, Lord's blessed me. I mean, they're they're older and lost miles on them, but you know, the car has been dependable for quite a few years. And uh, but I can remember back in the day, many times just being stuck on the side of the road. And God always gave me favor, and somebody would pull over and, and help me get back on the road. Man. Yes, there, there was one time. I don't have a long sermon this morning, so I can give you another <laughs> illustration here. We were, uh, I think, going to Colorado, right? No? We're headed back home to Wisconsin. Oh, we're heading back home to Wisconsin. That's right. And uh, uh, did we run out of gas? No, we had a flat tire. Had a flat tire. Okay, it's been a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> Charity was little. Charity was really, really little. And so I needed to get down to the gas station, so I was going to hitchhike, you know, to get a ride to get down to the gas station or whatever to get some help for this tire. And I wasn't having very much luck, so I bring Charity out there with me. She's standing right next to me. <laughs> Two ladies pull over right away. <laughs> and they gave me a ride down, and I got the, got the situation taken care of. But uh, so as you have opportunity and the ability to do so, um, we can also look for opportunities. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 15, it reads there, See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone. Well, that's another sermon. So let me just tell you what the Bible says, or insinuates anyway. You do unto others as you would have them do unto you, not do unto others as they have done unto you. Amen? Sometimes people tend to get that wrong. And that's not wrong. Or that's not right. But always pursue what is good, both for yourselves and for all. Pursue what is good for all. We want to do good. Amen? You know, we don't want bad to happen. God doesn't want bad to happen. Amen? In Titus 3.8, this is a faithful saying and these things I want you to affirm constantly that those who have believed in God should be careful, listen, to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. So we want to not just do good every once in a while, but maintain good works, continue to do good works unto others. In Hebrews chapter 13, 16, but do not forget to do good and to share for with such sacrifices God is well pleased. I tell you, uh, uh, one of the things I'm most impressed with with the CMA, Christian Motorcycle Association, man, they are all about doing good works. I mean, they are out there working. Uh, you know, Ron and Bev here with, with serving. There's, there's times like, how do you, you know, do all that? But, but I mean, the CMAers uh, are all about uh, uh, doing good. You know, because they're not doing it to secure their salvation. They're doing it so that they can share Jesus through their good works. You know, one of the things they do, uh, which may seem like a simple thing, but if you're on the other side of it, it's a big deal. It's like at these bike rallies, you know, they just have coffee in the morning. Well, what do you want to get coffee for? They've been out there drinking all night and everything. Well, you know, 
Jesus went into the, the world of the sinners, didn't he? I mean, he went right down there with the prostitutes. If he were here today, he'd probably walk into the bar and sit down. And, and uh, I heard someone say he poured pour everybody a drink. I don't think I'd go that far. Yeah. But he would go in there and share the love of the Father with them. I, I remember uh, when I was younger, we did that all the time. We walked into bars and handed out tracts. And, you know, I mean, that's what Jesus would do. Amen. So good works. You know, I can't remember who said it again, but, you know, someone once said, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And how do you show them how much you care? By trying to get them saved? Well, you do care for doing it. They don't see it that way. But you go there and you do some good things for them. You help them fix their motorcycle. You know, oh, I think I'll listen to that person. You see, they're, you're investing in them. And once you invest in them, you earn a right to talk to them. Amen? I didn't get paid any extra for giving that plug for CMA this morning. It just, <laughs> it just came to mind. I'm actually a member. I'm not a very loyal member, but I'm a member uh, of the CMA as well. There are opportunities all around us, but we just need to keep our eyes open for them. Amen? You know, we can do good by meeting the needs of those that live around us, doing something for our neighbor, being neighborly. You know, it's kind of interesting in our house, you know, we knew the people right across from us and next door to them, and we waved at the ones across the street. But we never saw our neighbors other than that until we got sidewalks. You know, now it's like we're meeting all kinds of neighbors, you know. We wave. So, you know, there's opportunity because of the sidewalk. People are getting up, walking up and down, running, walking their dogs and everything down the sidewalk. Again, we can do good in our neighborhoods. You know, maybe a storm caused damage to somebody's house in your neighborhood. You know, go on and help them. That, that, that says, says a lot. Or, or giving to help those abroad. We've done that many times here at Crosswalk Fellowship. We've taken up offerings for tornado or hurricane victims and so forth. We're not saved by our good works, but Scripture tells us we are saved for good works. And again, you don't hear this preached in a lot of uh, uh, a lot of churches today. But I believe that we we call ourselves full gospel. That doesn't just mean we believe in the gifts. Amen. We want to look at all the scripture. We want to try to apply all the scripture. That's why I just hate it when somebody is not here on a Sunday. It's like, if you only hear certain things and you don't get the full benefit of what we're trying to, to share. However, the good news is Mark's been so faithful in getting uh, the messages on, online that if you do miss a Sunday, you can't go back. Because there is, believe it or not, there, there's a, a rhythm to what I do up here. Or what God does up here, because I just follow His direction. But he goes on to say, especially to those of the household of faith. We're to do good to all men, even our enemies. But again, that's another story, another sermon. But especially to our brothers and sisters in Christ. So we're to do good to all men, but especially to brothers and sisters. When we truly get involved in a local church, a local assembly of believers... We really do become a family. You know, if there's not a sense of family in your church, we're doing something wrong. Because there, there really needs to be a sense of family. Even a large church can have a spirit and a sense of family in it. We're told over and over how important it is to love each other. See, our loving each other reveals our love for the Father. You know, in one place it says, how can you say you love me when you don't love your brothers and sisters? It's a bit of a paraphrase, but that's what it says. It's evidence that we know the Father because we love one another. That's how people know we're His disciples, because of our love for one another. I believe, or I'm thankful for the unity in our church. I believe that's a sign of maturity. Now, there may be opportunity to get upset with someone 
especially as we grow and more people, more personalities. But if we practice communication and forgiveness, we will maintain unity. Amen? Amen. There are so many churches that are not practicing unity. They're not practicing forgiveness. They're not practicing love. Let Crosswalk Fellowship never be one of them. Amen? Amen. A simple lesson this morning. We talk about doing good. And I thought, well, this is just not very profound at all, but... As a pastor, sometimes you just got to share the things you need to share. So I'm not here to impress you anyway. Amen. I would have lost that a long time ago, I'm sure, if it was my, my goal. But that's not my goal. Perhaps we need to be reminded from time to time that we are called to do good works. And to all men, especially brothers and sisters, let it begin right here in this body. Amen. Who better to do good for than those that are in your local church family? Every time you give, you're doing good. Every time you volunteer, you're doing good. Physical needs are important. Spiritual needs are even greater. Discipleship is important, and you make that possible, possible by your participation in your local church. And I just want to thank you this morning for tithing, for giving, I want to thank you for the snacks that you bring in for the kids. I want to thank you for teaching. I want to thank you for assisting the teaching in children's church. I want to thank you for playing instruments. I want to thank you for, for singing on the worship team. I want to thank you for putting the words on the screen, or as they used to say, words on the wall. <laughs> oh, you're one of those words on the wall churches? <laughs> you anybody ever heard that? Okay. Well, maybe we're past that a little bit. You know, make, making videos, and I could go on and on and on and on of all the different things. Matter of fact, I said the other day, you know, how we uh, last Sunday, you know, we were on staff at a church and we had volunteer uh, meal, and we invited all the volunteers to the meal, and the staff served all the volunteers. And I said, if we did that, we pretty much had the whole church. So we just have a we'll just have a carry in, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So as we leave this morning, I want to challenge you to ask God to give you opportunity to do good this week. Keep your eyes open. And when you do it, give God the glory. Amen. Give God the glory. As we therefore have opportunity, let us be diligent to share and to do good. To all. Amen? Amen. 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 We're here in just a moment. We're going to have communion together. But before we do that, I want us to pray. Just give the, give the Holy Spirit an opportunity to speak to our hearts this morning. Father, we thank you this morning for your goodness once again. We thank you that all the plans that you have for us are good. They're not meant to harm us. But Lord, you have such great things in store for your people. Lord, this morning as, as uh, we'll leave here shortly, I do pray, God, that you would give us opportunity to show the love of Jesus, to be your arms and your hands as we go out through this week, whether it be at work, in our neighborhoods, and in a grocery store, wherever it may be, Lord. Give us boldness to step out and to be a picture of you. And Lord, we're just careful to give you the praise and, and the thanksgiving for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.